Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. This is an abbreviated docket today. Why? Because we are going live tonight at 6 p.m. Mountain, where we will discuss on Tuesday Night Live with Crime Talk, Lori Vallow, Chad DeBell, Letitia Stauk, and the Gannon Stauk homicide investigation, as well as the Justin Bieber allegations. Let's talk about it tonight. But first on the docket, an ex-officer charged with the death of Rashad Brooks wants to go home. Apparently, he doesn't like jail. Second, following up on a tragic case out of Florida. And finally, our dumb criminal contestant of the day. Let's talk about it. Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. This is Scott Rice with Crime Talk, and thanks for watching. And as always, we're going to ask if you haven't already done so, please hit that little subscribe button, hit that little bell so that you receive notifications of when we go live, and as always, leave us a comment below. Now, as we stated, we will be going live tonight at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. We will do that for about an hour or so, and then we will be going to our Patreon private group. So if you have not joined our Patreon group, hit the little link below. If you hit that link and become a Patreon member, we will send you a link so that you can talk with us this evening on a private page. You won't be disappointed. First on the docket, ex-Atlanta police officer Garrett Rolfs, who has been charged with the murder of Richard Brooks, wants a bond hearing. Apparently, he doesn't like jail. And guess what? His attorney is making some pretty bold allegations to get him out. Now, obviously, the Standard bond argument is that your client is not a danger to the community or a flight risk, and the attorneys for Mr. Rolf state that in the motion. But what they're also stating is that the information contained in the affidavit for the arrest warrant was wrong. And in fact, I think you can actually say that Rolf's attorneys believed that the information presented in the affidavit was fabricated, not accurate. Now, we have talked about this. When anyone goes towards the court and asks for a warrant, whether for an arrest or a search warrant, you have to put all the good and bad information in there. And if you mislead the court, it could completely jeopardize the entire case if the information was bad. That's what Mr. Rolf's attorneys are alleging in this particular situation. They're stating that the Fulton County District Attorney did not rely upon the Georgia Bureau of Investigation to complete their investigation. That investigation usually takes 60 to 90 days, and it hasn't been completed, and the District Attorney has not consulted with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation at all regarding charging documents. Additionally, the attorneys for Mr. Rolf also state that the District Attorney cited the wrong legal standard as it relates to the use of force, particularly deadly force, when a police officer is in fact threatened with deadly force. These are significant factors that the court is going to have to consider. Now, most courts don't like to admit that they're wrong and say something was withheld from me. However, it can certainly be appealed to a higher court if the bond reduction is denied. Now, Mr. Rolf's attorneys have asked for an emergency hearing, so they're trying to expedite this and get this heard rather quickly. We'll see what action, if any, the court will take on it. The district attorney will more than likely supplement any information that they have learned since the affidavit was filed with the court. However, if it is truly exculpatory, um, the district attorney may have some explaining to do to the court because courts do not like to be misled in signing affidavits for arrest warrants or search warrants. Next on the docket, a follow-up on a case that we covered last week. This case came from Tallahassee, Florida. And we had told you that a young woman who's 19 years old, and I'm going to completely mispronounce this name, so I apologize in advance, Ola Wat. Tuning Salu had disappeared, and they had found her remains along with a 75-year-old woman, Victoria Sims. And apparently, Sims had befriended Salu and had recently uh, been going to uh, protests over the brutality of the police department. When the bodies were found, a gentleman by the name of Aaron Glee, a 49-year-old transient with a lengthy criminal history, 
uh, was at the scene and basically said that he was guarding the bodies. The police didn't elaborate, but they said that they had a person of interest. Well, as it turns out, Mr. Glee admitted on several instances to police officers to holding Miss Salou captive at his home and sexually assaulting her for three to five days before ultimately killing her. Police alleged that Glee met Salou on June 6, hours after Salou said she was sexually assaulted by another man. Salou made that statement on a Twitter post on June 6. Glee apparently states that he met Salou at a bus stop where she had confided in him about the sexual assault. Glee is also accused of murdering Victoria Sims, 75, who was an AARP volunteer at the time. Glee apparently went on and told the police that he offered Salou shelter and somewhere to sleep before calling Sims to pick them up in her car. Tallahassee police officers reportedly found the pair's body at Glee's home on June 13th. Salou was discovered under a pile of leaves behind Glee's home. Sims was located under a bloody sheet in the bedroom. Mr. Glee apparently also made voluntary admissions to police officers guarding him that he had murdered two women in Tallahassee. The court documents also stated that according to the Tallahassee Democrat, he would place telephone calls to his mother and make the same admissions. Glee decided to kill Miss Salou because he was convinced that he would go to prison if she ever reported what he had done to her. At some point, Mr. Glee then apparently ransacked Miss Sims' homes, remember the 75-year-old, stole her car, and ultimately kidnapped her. And like Miss Salou, Mr. Glee reported he also tied up Sims in a way that he would kill her. The police were able to trace Salou's cell phone to Glee's home on June 13th. Ultimately, they discovered Glee at a Greyhound bus station in Orlando. He allegedly purchased a one-way ticket to West Palm Beach. Additionally, they apparently found his vehicle stuck in the mud outside of Glee's home. Neither of the women's cause of death has been released. Mr. Glee has been charged with two counts of murder and one count of sexual assault, and he remains in custody without bond. And because it is a scary world and you do not necessarily know with whom you are dealing with, that is why everyone should have a background subscription. Go to crimetalksearch.com. You can sign up for a background search subscription, no risk trial. You can stop at any time. You can search people anonymously. You can search public records, which include bankruptcy records, property records, criminal records, which include sex offender registration. You can also search yourself to make sure that no one is using your identity without your permission. This is a must have in today's world. Go to crimetalksearch.com, sign up, you will be satisfied. Next on the docket, our dumb criminal contestant of the day. Who here remembers the Little Rascals movie? Hmm, not so much for me, but I remember watching the old stuff growing up as a kid. Anyway, the actor, Bug Hall, who was the lead in the role, the Little Rascals movie, was arrested this weekend in Weatherford, Texas. Apparently, the police were responding because of a potential overdose situation. And when the police officers arrived and went into the room, what did they find? Air canisters of air dusters in the room. That's right. The little air canisters that you use to clean your keyboards with. Who knew people were sniffing this stuff? I mean, we've heard of glue. We've heard of paint. But compressed gas or air so that you can dust your keyboards? Well, who knew? But why then does our dumb criminal contestant make it today? For failure to read the instructions. If you read and look closely, not even that closely, there's a caution that says, keep out of reach of children. The intentional misuse by deliberately inhaling contents may be fatal. What greater warning do you have here? You don't get these kind of warnings for other street drugs. No, you get them here on containers of air. And he didn't read them and he didn't follow them. And that's why, yes, Bug Hall of the Little Rascals is our dumb criminal contestant of the day. 
As we said at the beginning of the show, we're going live tonight, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. We're going to discuss Lori Vallow, Chad Daybell, Letitia Stauk, Justin Bieber, and anything else that comes up in the comments. Be here, log in, ready to go, live 6 p.m. And then after that, for our Crime Talk Patreons, we will be going to a Crime Talk page. So sign up for your Patreon membership and you will be able to have a private conversation with me this evening. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you tonight live on Crime Talk.